Hello, everybody. Welcome to the All Day Football Show. I'm your host, as always, Jackson Kellogg. And today, we've got our NFL Week 4 preview, going over top 10 teams, game picks, and for those Patriots fans out there like myself, going over the keys to the game on Sunday, facing the Buccaneers, Tom Brady coming in back home. Edelman made the comparison. It was like divorced parents at a picnic. And that's exactly what's going to happen. We're going to get into what the Patriots need to do to have a shot at winning that game. But jumping right into it, this is what the power rankings looked like last week. Boy, are they different this week with a bunch of changes. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers get their first loss since the regular season of last year. The defending Super Bowl champs take their first L on the year to the Los Angeles Rams. Rams coming in at home, getting a dominant victory over Tampa Brady. They just shut Tampa down as their secondary was young and injured, and Matthew Stafford took full advantage over that game. Bills move up into the third spot after a dominant win against Washington. Ravens and Packers both move up two spots after wins, both in close fashion, but they move up more or less because of the teams that move down, and that would be the 49ers and Kansas City Chiefs. 49ers lose down, move down after a close loss to the Packers, in which they scored a touchdown but gave Aaron Rodgers 37 seconds to set the team up in field goal position. Packers won the game. And then the Chiefs on a two-game losing streak, losing to the Chargers last week. So that puts them at 1-2 on the season. Chargers move up into the top 10, bumping the Patriots out. Chargers, like I said, dominant victory over the Chiefs. Patriots, they could not hold their own against the Saints and got their asses handed to them. It was just not even a close game. Raiders and Cardinals stay where they are after some close wins. Last week, the Raiders win in overtime against the Dolphins who are two a list, but Jacoby Brissett played well. And the Arizona Cardinals, they kind of played down to their opponent a little bit. This game should have been a bit more of a blowout than it was, as Jacksonville kind of gave them a little bit more of a run for their money than they should have. But that's what the top 10 looks like. I'm sure it's going to change even more after this week. Last week, I went 9-7 and in my picks. It's really sad because, you know, I've got friends in... And in their stats class right now, they they have to do game picks for uh, their class, and they get extra credit. They have a better record than I do, and they've never watched football in their life. It's so embarrassing, but there's such a thing as overthinking these picks, and I think that's what happened. They kind of just click their picks, and I, I go and like, well, this could happen, but then this could happen, and, you know, going into all that other stuff uh, and making the picks, so... These are my picks for this week. I've got the Bengals winning tonight on Thursday Night Football. I don't think the Jaguars are an NFL team, and they certainly will not be considered one until they win a game. Bills taking a win at home against the Texans. I've got the Colts, Titans, and Ravens all winning on the road against the Dolphins, Jets, Broncos. Had a bit of a debate with the Broncos-Ravens game. I don't think the Broncos are playing quality opponents, even though they are one of the last 3-0 and teams in the league. I think the Ravens are going to give them a better run for their money than the Jets, Jaguars, and Giants all did. I've got the Chargers winning on Monday Night Football against the Raiders. Raiders are also 3-0 right now with the Broncos. Only two 3-0 teams left in the AFC, but I think the Raiders and Broncos both take their L's this week. Moving to the AFC-NFC matchups, I've got the Chiefs and Browns winning on the road against the Eagles-Vikings. Just better teams winning on the road against um, lower-quality opponents. Got the Packers winning on Sunday against the Steelers at home. They're going to be running off of that high after the 49ers game. The Steelers do not look good right now. I hate doing it, but I've got the Buccaneers winning against the Patriots. We'll get into that matchup a bit more in a second. And then in the NFC, I've got all the home teams winning. I've got the Bears winning against the Lions. I think that game's going to be close. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if the Lions pull out with the upset got the Cowboys beating the Panthers. The Panthers are undefeated right now. Sam Darnold looking better than when he did with the Jets, but the Cowboys are just a more talented team, and I think that's going to show. We've got the Falcons winning at home against Washington. Washington, that defense was supposed to be really good, has not lived up to the hype so far this year, and I think Atlanta might take advantage of that. I've got the Saints winning against the Giants, 49ers, and Rams each taking wins against their 
division opponents in the Seahawks and Cardinals, respectively. Those are my picks for this week. Hopefully, we start to get a little bit better than you know mid tier records. As I went seven and nine, the nine and seven and nine and seven. So hopefully, it gets a little bit better. The Patriots got smacked, absolutely smacked by the Saints this past weekend. Wasn't even really that close. Mac Jones just had no time in the pocket to make any throws. Looking over the Patriots' offense over the past couple weeks, the things that were supposed to be good have looked bad, and the things that were bad were have looked pretty good. The receivers have definitely improved. They're getting open. That's not the problem anymore. There's a quarterback who can actually throw the ball now. That's also not the problem. He hold Mac Jones holds onto the ball a bit more than he should, but it doesn't help when your offensive line, who is supposed to be a top three offensive line, has played like hot garbage over the last couple weeks, allowing pressure after pressure. James White just went down for the year, which means Brandon Bolden is going to be taking snaps at running back because none of the other running backs know how to pass block. And it was only James White, which is ironic because James White was one of the smallest running backs in the on the team. Just makes absolutely no sense to me. And hopefully Damien Harris and J.J. Taylor, Ramon J. Stevenson can all learn how to pass block. So hopefully something changes on that front. But the keys to victory, though I don't think the Patriots will win. If they are to win, they're going to need to protect Mac Jones a lot better. Buccaneers have one of the best pass rushes in the league. Shaq Barrett, uh, JPP, Levante David, all those guys, Devin White, they're all going to be coming after you. And they're going to have to protect Mac and give him time in the pocket to make throws because the Patriots aren't going to be able to run the ball for 60% of their snaps. Josh McDaniels is going to have to learn how to play call. I didn't put it on here, but McDaniels' play calls have not been good so far this season. Defensively, I'm going to say they're going to have to play press coverage with deep safeties. And I, how this would work is you're going to have five DBs on the field at all times. Run nickel. You've got three press corners. You're going to throw a linebacker at the tight end spot because Gronk's not going to be playing. So I'm not too worried about that in that sense. But you need two safeties back there at all times. Or you can mix it up and do two corners, three safeties because... um. Antonio Brown is still questionable to play. He got taken off COVID list, so it means he might be playing now, but on snaps that they don't have A.B. on the field. Scotty Miller's out, so there's not a huge threat there at the wide receiver three if A.B.'s not playing. So if they can go back and forth between three corners, two safeties, or three safeties, two corners, but they're going to need people in the back at all times. There's going to be no such thing as cover zero blitzes in this game because Brady has seen it all the time playing against playing with the Pats, it's not going to be something they're going to be able to run. So keeping those safeties back. But at the same time, the corners have been playing such off coverage over the last couple weeks. It's so frustrating to watch. Teams have been running slants all day long against this team, and it's annoying when you have a third and one. The corner's playing eight yards back, and it's a slant for 12 yards and a first down. That just needs to end, and it's not going to work against Brady. And then the big thing here is the turnover battle. Limit the turnovers and force Brady to make poor decisions. It's very hard to do, but it's not impossible. If you can win the turnover battle in this game, control the clock. That's something the Patriots always did as a staple. And teams tried to stop uh, the Patriots from doing when they had Brady. Was keep the ball out of Brady's hands. That's exactly what the Pats are going to try and do here. Don't turn the ball over. Get these long offensive drives. Punish the ball downfield. Damien Harris, play action passes. Make the Buccaneers young secondary pay and hope they make mistakes back there. Uh, though I don't think all this is going to happen, which is why I've got the Patriots losing this game. I'm going to say they're going to lose 27-13. to I don't think it's going to be that close of a game. And I'm hope, kind of hoping it's either a blowout loss by the Pats or they just sneak by with a win so it's like a screw you to Tom Brady. Love the guy. Happy brought us six Super Bowl championships, but... He's moved on, and we've moved on to Mac Jones. So always appreciate and will love Brady, but as of right now, he's our opponent on Sunday, and got to look at it that way. 
But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Let's go, Pats.